Hello and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart on Forest Fan. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And um, if you've been watching some of our most recent shows, one of the things that has been coming up a lot uh, in communications that we have with our viewers via email and comments is that no one is getting a response from Mr. Fan when they email him. Mm, almost and no one. Almost no one is getting a response. And what they say is that perhaps maybe he's done with uh, the treasure. He's done with being bothered by hundreds and hundreds of emails, etc. Well, guess what, Ronnie? I sent Forrest Fenn an email back in November, I'm sorry, September of 2018, and that email was as follows. I'll give it to you. Uh, hello, Mr. Fenn. Your attention, please. My name is Lou Gallagher, and I host a YouTube show called Men Are So Smart. Now, unlike many of the Fenn shows out there, I have 30 plus years experience as a broadcaster and I would like to officially invite you to be a guest on our program. We will not ask for additional clues. Nope. We want to know more about Forrest Fenn, the person, the man. Thank you for your time. I'll wait patiently for your reply. Sincerely, Lou Gallagher. Now, again, that was on September the 6th. On Friday of week last, I decided I'm going to pop him off another one. And so I did. And it said, hello, Mr. Fan. Still waiting to hear from you. Lou Gallagher, men are so smart. That was on Friday, April 5th at 1134 AM. At 126 PM on Friday, April the 5th. Two hours later. I got a response from Mr. Fan, and I will share it with you right now. Lou, what do you want from me? <laughs> I don't have Skype. I will answer questions by email if that will help. Don't know what to do. F. He F'd me. <laughs> he gave me the F right he there. He gave me the big F. I saw the I see the F. So, Mr. Fenn has replied to my email. Yeah. And I got to tell you, Ron, I was on lunch when the email came over my phone and I heard it go bling because it makes a really uh, interesting t sound uh -huh. on YouTube. And I'm like, well, who's that? It must be just another email. And I look down and I go, oh my God. Not just another email. <laughs> this is from Forrest Fan. This is the email. What do you want me to do, Lou? Yeah, yeah. what do you want from me? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess what I'll say is that I was so nervous I haven't replied to him yet, I, know, I, I even know. I even emailed you and said, what should I say? Yep. So, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to offer him a bus ticket and a night in a Motel 6. I think that's the least we can do. Yeah, come on in out. In fact, I know it's the least we can do. <laughs> come on out to Sacramento. <laughs> um, Mr. Finn, we would love to come to you in New Mexico so that it's not to inconvenience you or... A man of your age doesn't really need to be jet setting all over the country. Right. We would be glad to come to you and we will do an interview with you. That is exactly what I've said. I want to know more about your days as a fighter pilot. I want to know more about your growing up and being an outdoorsman and your fishing and your hunting. And I want to know about how you compiled your wealth and, and so on and so forth. We have no intention of asking for any clues or asking any questions as to where the treasure might be. So there you go, Ron. And we're not searchers. No, no. no. Uh, so all we're looking for is a great broadcast. You know, a lot of people have said to me, Ron, um, he never does YouTube shows. I've heard that. And I understand that. But look, in his email, he says, I will gladly answer questions by email if that will help. Yeah. So he's got to be open to the idea. We don't want to um, Jerry Springer him. No. <laughs> or what are those like? Uh, what are those makeup things that go to people's houses and they surprise them at the door? Oh, what is that yeah, uh, intervention. Yeah, we're not we're not yeah. looking to do an intervention. <laughs> so in any case, we are in communication with Mr. Finn, and we will keep you updated as we go. Uh, our purpose for joining you today, 
uh, and doing another Fen episode is we have a lot more comments and emails that we'd like to share with you. So, Ronnie, why don't you go ahead and uh, go with the first one? Well, let me just start with this one. Okay. It's, it's one of the most recent ones. Mm -hmm. And it's basically uh, regarding the show today. Okay. So, last week I talked about uh, AGK, A Gypsy's Kiss. Right. And their show had really no Forrest Fen information. And I kind of get it. And Steve Klein, he made a comment that said, cue the AGK followers hate comments in response to your review. <laughs> I my, saw that. <laughs> my review was, was critical, I, no doubt. And I, I really didn't mean it to come off that critical because uh -huh. it is a, they really do a nice job producing the show. They do. But there was no, I, I found no fan content at all in it. And so, and I, and I told him as much. Uh, let me see. And he says, and you know, and he said basically his comment was meant as a joke. Uh, I know it didn't, mean, you didn't mean anything by it. You were just giving your honest review and all fairness to a gypsy's kiss. There really is nothing new to talk about in the chase. True enough. Uh, even the major, uh, is getting tired of it. I'm sure he's talking, uh, anyway, even the major is getting tired of it and he started it. I think Toby and Shelly are just providing a platform for the Fen community. They already said they are not looking for it anymore. I guess it's more of a hobby for them. So, I mean, again, uh, I, I'm telling him, and my response was, don't get me wrong, the production quality of the show is top notch, but if you're actually looking for Fen info, the current show doesn't have any. But I told Lou that this morning, I look on YouTube and just the regular internet all day long for current or up-to-date fan information. There isn't any because there really isn't anybody out there right now looking for it. It's still, I'm sure, covered in snow. Um, so, okay. I'm it may be summer. It may be summer before someone could actually Before put anything new comes out on the fan treasure, we may have another three months to wait. I got a... Um I got an email from Edna, and she says, um, New reply on Treasure Tracer, a.k.a. Jack Griffin, erased his face to associate with H.G. Wells' 1897 novel, The Invisible Man. Tracer's name may actually be Jack Griffin, but I don't know. Dr. Griffin was first introduced in the book by Wells. Later, Claude Rains portrayed the character Jack Griffin with the first name Jack in the 1933 film. I asked Tracer if this was intention, his intention, and he said he was wondering if anyone would catch on to the character. I do not know why he isn't posting anymore. In my humble opinion, Fenn's treasure isn't far from home and is easily identified. It's all in the way one looks at it. Great video, men are so smart. Enjoy watching your vlogs. Thank you very much, Edna. Appreciate it. Ronnie commented and he said, um, Edna, I hadn't put those pieces of the video together, but yes, you totally nailed it. That's why I'd never be good at this treasure hunt. I take everything at face value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's you, Ronnie. I, I try not, and I try not to do this for a number of reasons, but hey, if something is black, it's black, and if uh -huh. it's white, it's white, and I don't go much beyond that. Uh -huh. So again, that's why I would not be good at this because all these clues to me, I look at them for what they are, and I don't really try to connect them with anything else, as Edna has done here. Yes. And and uh, just for the record, I uh, emailed back and forth, with, and, and uh, Treasure Tracer is Jack. Uh, when I asked him, I said to him, hey, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't think I remember your first name, because he knew my name was Lou. And he goes, I don't have one, but people call me Jack. <laughs> okay. He's a mysterious guy, and I will yep. tell you this. He did divulge to me why it is that they aren't doing videos anymore, but he did it in confidentiality, Ron. Right, right. And so um, as much as I'd love to be able to share it with you, I, I can only say that his reasons are well-intended and I understand them. And so that's why you're not seeing those videos. Yep. Okay. Um, let me see. There was another one I want. Oh, uh, here it is. Um, wait, wait, wait. Oh, here we go. This is from Grizzly Bear. Okay. Uh, damn, after seeing that picture in the beginning, 
Olaf. <laughs> I have to burn my tablet. <laughs> this was unexpected. <clears throat> Ew. Your video should come with a disclaimer. <laughs> and, and then Lou said, uh, yeah, we kind of had to do that. Uh, we do so enjoy pictures from our viewers as long as it's done in good taste. Oh, and Olaf's photos, they were in good taste. Totally good taste. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, totally not Mitzi says, somebody tell Olaf I'm single. <laughs> Yeah, and then I warned Mitzi that he's a bit of a dumpster fire. So, <laughs> yeah, you might want to look. Keep looking, Mitzi. <laughs> Marshall George says, "Hasn't Fenn said that he could fall onto the box when he dies, and nobody would find or see his body?" And I replied, "To my knowledge, he has said he would like to have his bones rest on the chest." Okay, uh, but we all know or believe the size of the chest to be 10 by 10. Um, so a body would certainly cover that. Right. A skeleton, on the other hand, would not. Yeah, not so much. Right. Yep. Uh, and this is a, a nice little one from Mel Fisher. Love your show. It's good to see two friends doing something that they enjoy. The new intro is cool. And I told Mel Fisher, that's all Lou. He's the creative genius. Oh, and thank I, you, Ryan. I really don't have much of a hand in the production of it. I'm just here for the... Uh, to kind of balance the shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt in the Park says, interesting show as always, fellas. I replied, thank you, Man in the Park. We truly appreciate you watching our little show with regularity. And when I say regularity, I mean, I hope you're going consistently. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Kurt Hensley a couple days, two days ago, uh, I just want to say I love your show. Not a typical Fen show, which is kind of what we're reaching for. Thank you. Uh, which is a breath of fresh air. I want to put this lead searcher thing to rest once and for Please all. Please do. I know who the lead searcher is beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, we all do. And if everyone in the Fen community would just be honest with themselves, they could admit uh, that they know who it is also. The lead searcher is them. What? Mm, yeah. Them? Hope this clears it up for everyone. Oh, yeah. Obviously, clear. not clear. Not very clear. Clear as mud, I think, uh -huh. I believe I said. Yeah. Uh, I think I replied back to that, that I don't even get why the lead searcher is a thing. I mean, who would want to be the lead searcher on a treasure that hasn't been found for 10 years? Biggest loser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, and then he, uh, Kurt also says that, uh, I believe I live in the state where the treasure awaits. Yellowstone is in that state. I don't feel if it's that it's in Yellowstone. However. Well, we talked about that many times, Ronnie. You yeah. know, putting it in a state park um, just convolutes everything. Right. And um, and I, I'm I'm like ninety nine percent sure that uh, Forrest Fenton says it's on public grounds. So Yellowstone is a national park. Wouldn't really be considered public property so i don't think it's there he also says i would say that until a searcher could disclose what double omega means they are clueless um we did a whole show about that we did um let's see this is uh oh mel fisher who is also the double omega reply uh he says he knows the answer to the flashlight and sandwich question. I thought you addressed that pretty well in the last episode. Yeah. Uh, that I think you said that the flashlight would be because you probably would be coming back in the dark. Right. Because it's, uh, a, it's a bit of a walk-in. Somebody made a reference to that flashlight and the blaze. True. Um, yeah, I saw that. Not being able to see the blaze without a flashlight. Right. Uh, we'll look into that and see what we can find. Um, let's see, Corvette Ronnie, probably, but if they had the correct solve, they would certainly have the treasure in their possession. In my personal opinion, nobody has it or even remotely close. This lead searcher is merely bull, either produce the chest or shut up. I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. But again, nobody's going to be producing the chest until eh, June or July-ish, probably. Um, Tony Driver, thank you for your comment. He says, uh, I love the show. Everyone deserves their 15 minutes of fame, I guess. Thank you. I think yeah, that's directed at us. I love your Oakland A's t-shirt, Ronnie. Oh, yeah. One of my two favorite teams, the Mets and the Oakland A's. Boy, we got it. Yeah. We got our bases covered right here with those. He says, I'm age 51, so I'm in the club. Yeah, well, welcome to our club. Men are so smart. And you know what? And I told him, now, 
I've been going to A's and Giants games for quite a quite mm -hmm. a long time. The first Giants games I went to was because my next door neighbor was a civilian employee at a then Air Force base, mm -hmm. and they put a trip together every year for young kids to ride a bus, go down, and you'd get a, a, a bag lunch on the way to the ball game, go down and see a ball game on a Saturday, and then they buy you a hot dog or something down there, they throw you back on the bus and you bring you home. The first games I saw there, Gaylord Perry, oh. Jesus Alou, Philippe Alou, Jim Davenport, uh, Orlando Cepeda, Willie Mack, Willie Mays, um, I mean, so many, so many amazing giants. I mean, these are giants that are, you know, Hall of Famers. And those are the guys that I saw. I didn't make it to my first A's game until the 70s. Oh, wow. Right when they were on yeah. that roll, that World mm -hmm. Series roll, where they, I think, went to three in a row. Uh, and so I saw all of those guys play also. So I've really seen some of the best of both of those teams play. Yeah. A little bit off the Forest Fen track. Right. That's okay. Yeah. Um, Corvette Ronnie Edna says, if you have the thrill of the chase book, then read the chapters Philadelphia Caper, Caper, and the Totem Pole Caper Cafe. Look up Caper in accordance with food and what a caper actually is. You just mentioned Citizen Kane's most prized possession. This, as well as the spices, green olives, and cloves, Fen references may be very important because they are the same thing as a caper, but from different sources. Think gardening, a gardener, as in growing plants with reference to Fenn's Gardener. It may surprise you. Then again, it may not mean a thing. When I get a chance, I will email you more. Thank you, Edna. We appreciate your participation in our show. Yeah, that's another thing here. Um, we actually do reply yep. to your comments and, and your emails, uh, unlike others that just kind of blow them off or look into get a lot of comments. There has to be reason. probably a total of... 80, 60 or 80 comments on this last video, and we love it. Uh, oh, sure. I mean, it really does. It gives us a chance to interact with some of the people watching this show, which is mm -hmm. kind of kind of cool. We were talking about it earlier, how when we look at the stats of where this show is seen, it's seen all over the world. All around. Yeah, including Canada. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I, no, no, Eight? not really. <laughs> we meant to leave them out. Sorry, Sophie. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Um, oh, I wanted to mention that on our website, we have a Forest Fen Treasure page now. That's right. On the page, you'll find uh, videos, Forest Fen videos, including Vanished, which is our most popular video. And also, you'll find uh, some photos. Our blogs are there. And also, there's a, a Fen survey that you can take. That's right. And we'd love to have you do that. Uh, those replies come directly to my phone and my computer uh, so I see them um, you can contact us and leave us your email address or just send us an email we can get back to you yep uh, we do so enjoy that uh, our fen shows we usually try to reserve Friday for that and um, going into the weekend so you'll have time to watch it um, what else Ronnie am I forgetting anything well I would just say that uh, some of the replies we've had on on the page about the forest fan stuff. Uh, I think I recognize a couple of them as Olaf. <laughs> so, <laughs> Olaf, keep it up because we enjoy them. Uh, and Where's, so, where is that he, one? And they're one? not signed, but I do feel like they have an Olaf <laughs> kind of a flavor to them. <laughs> so, uh yeah we know we know it's you yeah all right but we're not we're not hating no no hell no no uh are you a fan of lou ronnie or neither or both this one says neither if other please specify i'm a fan of olaf <laughs> thank you olaf <laughs> appreciate it buddy <laughs> Now we're going to make that guy a star. Right. And they're not signed, so we don't know that it's Olaf. No. But I don't know. Who else would put Olaf down there? I think M Olaf Maybe would. not so Mitzi. A pot, yeah. you know what? I, okay. think she, I think she thinks he's hot. So, <laughs> Olaf, maybe I'm throwing shade where right? I shouldn't be. You so. know what? Maybe we'll make a connection here, a love connection. That would be nice. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that in two and two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we got to get out of here. All right. Be sure to check out our website. 
Join us on Facebook, follow us there. There's so many ways to get a hold of us. And we like to believe that we are the most approachable hosts of any YouTube show there is. Yep. If you seriously take the time to watch our show and then take time to comment, we couldn't we couldn't appreciate that more. Yep. We appreciate you and thank you for watching. You know what? And if you like these videos, you might check out we have a couple of we don't just do Forest Fen videos. We have some other good stuff out there. Just check one out. They're yeah. Eight, eight, 10, 15 minutes long at the longest. Yeah, check it out. We have over 400 episodes. Plenty to choose from. Yeah. Just think about how much Saturdays that is. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ryan. Yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, yada on the next Men Are So Smart.